Yeah, I welcome you to this session. It's a split session in three parts. We start with a minute of advertising because we had a nice sponsor that we are allowed to come here. So I will use this one, give you a very, very brief overview on the context in which we are working in. Then uh, you shortly see that this is not a Bosch presentation, it's an ELISA project presentation. So I give you a little bit of insights how in ELISA project, which is normally on safety, and this is not a pure safety topic, we'll get through this. And this looks all a bit uh, marketing-ish, more high-level thing, and then we will make a hard cut towards really technical things, and Thomas takes over from me, so he will go through the system composition. So if you feel in the first five minutes, oh, this is not the level I would have expected, I wanted to see more on the source code, or I would like to see the ideas behind it, then wait another three minutes and you will be there. Right, this set, uh, let me go for the first thing. I am working currently in a project which is focusing on embedded IoT Linux, and so is Thomas where I do more on the technical, technical business development, OSS, engagements, and so on. Thomas focus on the content below. And what we have in mind is that we use all these different projects, which we can see here, bring them into our project, and create a value for a lot of different Bosch units. And basically, all these areas of products you can see are prepared by Bosch, and they all not exactly always the brand or the picture of the icon will be have Linux in there, but all these business units use embedded Linux and with various kind of technologies behind. So this was the advertising part. I would jump over to the ELISA project. Um, if you haven't heard about the ELISA, we are also sponsoring the Critical Software Summit. Main sessions are on Friday. And what we target is to create different kind of artifacts, set element, processes, tools to uh, get closer to safety certification for products being used with Linux. And for this, heavy work is also documentation. And kind of this presentation served also the idea of being not the best present documentation part yet, but at least a way there. We're not alone as Bosch, but there are many others parties involved in the ELISA project. We have really strong supporting our members as premier members. With Boeing, you see also aerospace being involved and uh, in turn Red Hat driving more the automotive track, but not limited to it. And then we have a large set of members from automotive. So basically, this is also where major use cases are in. However, if you don't go into verticals, but more into horizontals, uh, the ELISA working groups are split into some core groups. So there's a safety architecture involvement led by Red Hat. They do kernel analysis, look, for example, into the watchdog subsystem, see how system calls are being made, and so on. So this is the overall idea of the safety architecture. This will lead to a safety product on the very long run, more or less on a three to five year scale when you think about it. But there are people already developing things now. So uh, for this, we have a Linux features work group, which just looks in the scope of, well, you know, from security, there's C group, namespaces, potential things which you could make use of, but you need to know how to use them to make them really, things really secure. And we look now for similar things within this work group to see what will be beneficial for safety. The whole long story comes from the Friday and the overview and outlook on ELISA on the Critical Software Summit. And uh, yeah, just two more groups, not directly related. The tools investigation, code improvement. This is on seeing where could kernel patches apply, how do, which tools are there to supporting safety. We need a process around it. So that's what the OSEP, the open source engineering process is doing. And the main focus today would be the systems work group parts. The systems should bring things together. I have a slide in a minute on it. So they're not talking too much about it. But I want to talk about this horizontals basically would create a framework, but the framework needs a context, and this needs typically a use case. For this, Elida operates in verticals. The newest work group was the aerospace one. It started basically at the beginning of the year, and in the founding phase, they try to more figure out who are other aerospace companies involved, which are use cases which we can start off. They have a wonderful presentation about how Boeing makes use of Yocto. We have a webinar in July, so it's a good chance to, to look this 
at this. And yeah, one of the first use cases we had were from the automotive part. This was the warning signs cluster dimmer from AGL because this was already implemented there. It's a good base. It's something which should later during the year also get into the systems work group. And the second use case group, major one was the medical devices. Ah, shortly teething, this is an open artificial pantry system. And this is really fancy because it was started in open source without safety regulations, following safety regulations, but with the user-centric focus by the user itself. And it has a growing community. So this is quite nice to see. And we support this with the analysis, looking into critical elements, what kernel cause could cause a risk to the operation. So we are supporting here. And I guess currently they are also more in a way of following certain certification passes. But just a short word on where things go from the automotive thing. Uh, if you would like to learn what we're doing there, and I'm telling this because this is also the way where we want to go with the systems work group. Uh, we thought that we have new people joining and often the same questions come like, how do I set up the system? How do I do the work? And it took us like three to four iterations to really come to a state that a new member joins and just with a step-by-step -step bite, it's able to do things. Sometimes there's still a link which may be expired or so. Recently, Yocto project changed some links in the docu and the implementation, and then our build didn't, or the guideline didn't work one-on-one, -on -one, or Docker has changed some links. But what we really would like to achieve is that, depending on your interest capabilities, you can start either with just following guidelines and sources, start with a Docker file to make your environment easier, or just take the Docker image if you don't want to bake it on your own, uh, or download images and just boot a QAMO system. So these kind of things are all combined, and uh, yeah, the links are in there. What makes it interesting from more like the safety critical part is uh, there is a kind of dependable flow. So it means from our pipeline, the documentation, which is RS Meta Lysan in the GitHub, <coughs> one-on-one -on -one more or less represent the Docker file. So we see if the documentation changes, we get a direct conclusion to the Docker file. Of course, the Docker image is generated by the Docker file, and this Docker image, which you will have, is also the one which is used in the GitLab. This means if you download this Docker image, you can more or less say, this is the one which goes into the GitLab part, and from GitLab then the execution is triggered, and there's the last part, there is a QA, open QA part, which is currently hosted at CodeThing, which does a boot check and check that our implemented mechanisms on the danger sign, this telltale monitoring, warning signs monitoring still works. I can say the major issues which we had in the past were actually on, not directly on the sources, but something which you don't foresee directly, like some, at some point in time, certificates expired, and then the can stack didn't work properly anymore, and we rely on CAN messages. This is something that you will see in test, but yeah, we're doing some rebuilds also. We have s state to make resource consumption a bit less, but all in this means there's a dependable queue. Whenever I break something in this queue, wherever you do a mistake, it will go back, and what the user does consuming it is exactly what the CI does. So we really see the CI as being a user of our system. We want to spread this now into a wider environment where it's not only Linux, while still the Lisa project focus on Linux. But we also add an RTOS. We want to go on a microcontroller later on. Currently our RTOS is still on, which is Sapphire then, on top of a Xen hypervisor. We took these projects because they are all safety relevant and we see how our different work groups can benefit. It's really the idea, if you want to build a safe system with Linux, it will run in a system context. And if you prepare an artifact, you need to experience this artifact and that's nothing special which is related to our environment. It's something which you have for a lot of use cases because you have your little change and you want to figure out how does this look like in a later system setup without spending months for prototyping or so. That was the driver of it. We're not taking this fully alone. We also interact with other communities. So we know that the Xen and Zephyr, they have both a certification pass, trying to get to a certifi safety certification with different challenges and some commonalities. Uh, as we have strong driver with automotive, we also act with uh, AGL, SOFI, and Eclipse SDV. So these are partnerships which we are doing where we are in regular exchange because they share this 
kind of system architecture. And then we have further outreach. So we uh, have been in discussion with Linaro, with SPDX folks. So we created an own SPDX special interest group on uh, safety SBOM. And yeah, the Octo project from the build system is also involved. Right. I guess this comes more as the last thing which I want to tell. The overall idea is, well, if you exchange an apple, I exchange an apple with you, then we both have still one apple, but exchanging ideas mean that the other person suddenly has two ideas and the same is for you. <coughs> and based on this, uh, we want to prototype these kind of things. And this was also one lesson when discussing with AGL, when discussing with our partners, when discussing with Xen, it was like, yeah, I did all these nice features and I show this for years, but the main question is, how do I try these things out? And this was basically the story Stefano was presenting last year in Austin during the Open Source Summit. And this was on a QAMO and we came to the brave idea, let's put all this on hardware. How hard can this be? So this concludes my marketing-ish high-level presentation and I hand over to Thomas. Hello, um, I'm Thomas Mittelstadt and I'm senior engineer um, and I'm integrating in fact systems uh, uh, since a long time and I bring things together and this is my profession. And uh, when I have entered this project, I have seen, um, yeah, I, I have faced some challenges and the challenge is, uh, first challenge is uh, to select the right target board. Um, it seems to be easy, but in fact, it's really difficult. The problem is that you have uh, uh, several requirements, which are uh, sometimes yeah, fit, uh, sometimes not. Uh, and I will uh, show you later uh, the hardware we have examined. The other thing is the setup of the Yocto built environment, which is at the moment the basis uh, to set up uh, the Xen system because there are a lot of uh, examples and I can try out and especially for Xilinx I can use, but also for the Renaissance stuff. And, uh, but the setup of the Yocto build environment is not so simple because uh, yeah, it depends on your computer resources. Uh, if you have a slow computer, you are facing sometimes network problems. And also um, we are working basically uh, behind a proxy and uh, then uh, it's a mess with the proxy. But this can be solved um, partly uh, with a uh, Docker image also, like uh, Philip has explained. Uh, so at the moment, the best Yocto build environment will be a um, proven uh, Docker image. And the other problem, but this is not related to Xen, is uh, it's really sometimes hard to find valid descriptions. So you find a lot of descriptions, but if you try it out, or we have tried it out, uh, well, something go, doesn't work. And uh, this uh, I have often faced. And uh, then you have to build the images based on the descriptions and then other things are going along. So, and, but the advantage at our project is we have a lot of specialists here for, for, for the several systems and uh, we can simply ask them uh, how this works. And this is really a big advantage con compared uh, to the usual work at our company. Yeah, and at the end, uh, not, uh, the goal is not only to um, do the things, but only to un also to understand what is happening. But this is a long story, a long lasting story. Um, I give you a short overview about the stuff we have examined. We have started with the Renaissance family, some targets like the H3 uh, premium and uh, also other targets. It was at the beginning very nice because the hardware support is very nice. Uh, you have a functional sense system, you can create it. Uh, but at the end we have uh, stopped this activity because the Renaissance has uh, not not the right uh, license condition. 
um, uh, Renaissance is forcing us uh, to use proprietary licenses, otherwise you can't do the really interesting things like graphics and so on. And it's really hard to uh, get and to uh, buy for usual customers uh, from a purchaser because uh, you need connections to the product manager and yeah, this is hard. Uh, but uh, the license pro problem uh, was uh, the major uh, reason uh, not to continue with Renaissance. And uh, at the other side, we have started uh, with the Xilinx boards, different. Uh, at the moment, we have, try, uh, we have tried out the CCU102. And uh, the advantage from this board is it's already also very good, very good supported. It's nice support from point of sen. Uh, the hardware is fitting to the needs and uh, Xilinx has really nice documentation. Um, this is reliable. You can try out almost all the things you want. The problem is it's a little bit expensive and uh, the CCSU is, uh, 102 is a little bit outdated. It has not all the capabilities, especially the graphics can't be uh, passed through uh, to a domain. Uh, there is a problem with, uh, uh, with some hardware, but uh, the plan is that there will be an update um, uh, a newer board which is much cheaper yeah and and so this is uh, okay and the sets you has some problems or that's, uh, there are some additional problems uh, you have to not only to program the software but you have once only also to take care uh, for the FPGA programming you have to create some uh, bit streams and this is sometimes a little bit annoying but uh, the rest is really nice you see here some links so if you are interested what I mean and you have the presentation you can point to the links and um, then you can see what is happening and uh, we have uh, continued other targets uh, we have thought it's while for about uh, the QA systems but uh, this is an also nice, but for proof of concepts, it's not really uh, feasible because you can't uh, bl uh, blink some LEDs and some lamps and uh, you can't control some motors. Perhaps it's possible for the specialists, but it's uh, hard. Uh, yeah, so we have stopped it because yeah, it's, it's restricted. But uh, at the other one, we have also had a look at the Raspberry Pi systems, but Raspberry Pi has not the right or hardware capabilities, so it's not sufficient for a secure Xen system. Um, so from point of uh, from point of security, um, it's not feasible. And we had a look at NXP, INX8 systems, and the problem is this is really good from a hardware point of view, it's good from the license point of view, but the problem is at the moment NXP doesn't support uh, Xen in the right way. They have other focus. I have called, I have talked with the uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, people from uh, from NXP and they, uh, they uh, she has said uh, uh, they are aware of this problem and uh, they w uh, she will um, ask internally how to continue. And the hardware here, and only in short overview, we have used the set CU102. Um, and uh, yeah, it's not a big thing I have used here an additional hardware for the demonstrator. Um, yeah, we have uh, our SD card. Um, there's only the bootloader placed and we have a USB stick with the whole demonstrator setup. And I have used for one use case uh, for the uh, adapter pass through um, uh, uh, some USB ethernet adapter. And you need some environment uh, here mentioned, and this is the overall image. What I want to show you here is, uh, you have in fact here uh, the hardware. Um, the hardware is connected with some putty, and uh, later I will show you some videos what uh, is happening there. Uh, and there are some hardware connected. The local Ethernet means the built-in NIC, which is a part of the board, and I have a second uh, Ethernet adapter. Both are connected to a local network which is supporting DHCP. This is not automatically at our company site, um, but uh, yeah, then it's much easier. Uh, we have some software parts, especially the bootloader, which is in fact a new boot um, and uh, which controls with the boot source 
uh, this is bootstripped the stuff to start. And uh, the bootloader is started from the SD card because yeah, uh, the SD card is a major boot me media, but the rest is started from the USB stick. And the software itself consists of a Xen system, which is in fact a specialized uh, Yocto uh, 2022.2 uh, system uh, with some parts from Xilinx. And uh, at the other side, I have some VM software. And to, on, uh, I will say uh, all the systems are not aware of um, of uh, yeah of the special setup so uh, the apertus uh, build i will show you um, is uh, yeah it is not aware uh, about xen there are no special drivers built in it's just from the mainline stuff and also the simple peter linux which i am using i have simply downloaded the bsp this is a package from xilinx i put uh, the root fs put the uh, image inside so nothing is prepared and this is what i want you to explain here the idea is we want to have a skeleton and kind of a frame but the systems on top of it are uh, we have, I always say they are weakly bind, uh, bound. So weakly bound means uh, you don't have to uh, regard what is inside of the frame, but uh, this is a kind of a platform and you are landing simply on it. And uh, that this is working, I can show. And yeah, and I have used several sources. Uh, one is Xilinx Yocto uh, 2022.2. This is not really uh, Xilinx. There are some additions for the Pita Linux implementation, but not really much. Uh, and it's all open. I have used some binaries from the Xilinx. I have used an apertus build by my own because uh, we, uh, we at Bosch are supporting uh, apertus and using apertus. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm integrator for uh, for a lot of apertus image. So I have built up an apertus system. And we have used the former demonstrator uh, based on the Renesas Air car. And I have simply got uh, the Sapphire image binary as binary. So uh, the build has not built something special for our Peter Lee, uh, uh, for our Xilinx setup. I have used the uh, image for uh, Sapphire the binary. I have put it at, uh, at the Sen and it has worked. So the idea behind is um, the Sapphire and all the other systems are using uh, common interfaces and yeah, and uh, they will work. And some instructions and all the parts you see here are uh, there are links yeah um this is an explanation from this. I have a theme I can go over because we uh, perhaps uh, we need the time for demonstration. Uh, this is a theme for the SD card USB loader. Um, it's not really much interesting, but you can have a look. Now we come to the interesting parts. Um, I have uh, diff created uh, different uh, demonstrations and this, uh, the special thing here is um, it's uh, usable out of the box so I have uh, used the binaries and uh, they were easily uh, to set up and yeah and I want to show you now. Uh, the first setup I want to show you is a very simple setup hopefully you can see it. And this is simple, um, the setup about, yeah, that's okay. What is it? Wie kriegt man das wieder weg, dass der Pointer nicht mehr ist? Now, okay, um, now we start. Here, this is a, um, the idea behind us. We have stages and I have some titles added. So if you have a look, you see what is uh, done. And now it's booting with the Zen and the DOM, DOM Zero. It's very simple. It's a standard boot and you see some kernel activities. Hopefully you can see it. It's a little bit not so big, but uh, the, the videos are at a higher resolution. And now, uh, after uh, the Xen is started, 
I will I simply log in. This is always and the setup. Uh, yeah, this is for this Yocto image. It's also based at uh, Yocto 2022. Uh, and now I simply um, uh, look for uh, for the list what are av available and you see only domain zero is started and yeah and then uh, I start the simple demo with the Peter Linux image um, I, uh, at the USB stick uh, I have a directory I change to the directory you can see some configuration files for Xen and uh, yeah simply I start with this creation and what is happening now is secondary VM is started and um, this VM is not aware about Xen and it can it has at the end not much not much not many capabilities, but uh, yeah, it can easily be started and I can, uh, now Xen has started and uh, yeah, and then I change to the console and uh, yeah, and I'm miswritten and you see here the guest zero started and this is so far, uh, we will wait to change to the console and then I will uh, um, start the next example because I guess, uh, yeah, and now we see the console output from the simple application. It looks very similar to the Xen because the base system is the same. Yeah, and now I'm in there. I have to repeat my password, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, and now we are at the system. I will stop here. And I will uh, show you a nice other uh, approach. And this is Apertis. Um, uh, the, the, it's in fact the same approach, but the idea is uh, Apertis is completely, uh, yeah, there are different parts, a different image, uh, system image for Linux, the device tree is different, but uh, the advantage is Apertis is supporting this out of the box. There are only few changes needed because I'm creating here a run disk file for Apertis uh, because not all, all Word IOs uh, are part of the RAM disk, but um, yeah, you have to add the Word I.O. devices and that's all. And if we look here at the uh, I have not no, it needs some exercise. Okay, um, now uh, the same procedure. Uh, I want to uh, increase the time or uh, speed up. But here you have another configuration file and uh, the configuration file starts the um, apertus also at the RAM disk image. Uh, from procedure same, but I want to show you that it's not only theoretically, um, it's done. And from us, uh, the, the message here is uh, you can use an Apertus image, you can use uh, your Yocto image, you can use almost uh, all images you can ma uh, imagine. And yeah, and they are starting uh, um, at, uh, at the Xen base system. And uh, our idea is uh, to develop this in, in a way um, that uh, you have a, a kind of an import or an interface from the uh, Xen system. And yeah, it can be, um, and the system can be loaded. And here you see the apertus. Uh, we have a bliss uh, image, it's a nano image, but in fact it's an uh, apertus system with the usual um, interface and here only some hint that there are no networks. And this was uh, is, uh, sh to show you and uh, there's also the possibility to start a Sapphire system, because, uh, but I will stop because we are going out of date. What I want to show is uh, perhaps uh, that uh, it's possible and this is really nice. Uh, pass through of Ethernet controller. You see at the uh, left corner, 
the network. This is a, in, in the case a little bit uh, small, but if you have the presentation before you, you can have a look. Um, and uh, yeah, and this uh, uh, use case um, shows you how to transfer a NIC controller uh, to to the image, and uh, yeah, and uh, this can be easily done. And if you think further, then you can say, okay, I can have an aperture system which has an Ethernet controller, and you can have a other system, and this should be for this day. I, what I, I want to show, because uh, these are only the demo cases, and so we are coming to the end. Yeah, I guess I just wrap it up. So, uh, what I want to mention, we want to bring a lot of this documentation also in GitHub. The original work, for example, from the Renaissance setup, it's in there as a work in progress pull request. We will most likely close it soon. You see that it's on an older date, but we didn't make it into the CI due to the mentioned reason. And for all the other things, there's public reference. You will also find all this from the Lisa tech side. And yeah, as originally was planned to show really the full setup, also the already having the GitHub link and so on, but we're not yet there. Turned out hardware is sometimes a little more tricky than uh, even if you know about it than you expect. And by this, I guess we can conclude, say, Thanks, and have still a few minutes. If I see the counter for questions, which you hopefully have. At the first hand, let's see if yeah, Walt is moving. Yes, uh, thank you for the presentation. Very interesting. Um, yeah, first I, I would uh, I actually have two questions. <laughs> First question is about the uh, how do you choose uh, to go for SEN and not other options like uh, KVM or maybe contain containerization? Yeah, so uh, the selection for XEN was basically, so we discussed also about KVM and we, which, because also AGL was working with KVM. Um, we took this because the XEN brings a good strong pass on security and the, even more important on the safety because we see that they try to get into safety certification for open source and this gave a good fit for ELISA. So we wouldn't bound on this. And as Thomas said, we try to build a skeleton. So the idea would also be if the skeleton works and where you can place your Linux VM, if you, where you can replace the Zephyr, the idea should also be from the recipes you get a pass on showing additional virtualization hypervisor technologies. But it was just the starting point because we had direct outreach to the community. I know they have a safety path and this helped us a lot. Okay, thank you. And uh, the second question, um, in the presentation, I'm not sure if there's already like uh, information on what's the, the usage of the CPUs, uh, because is SyncMP is using a Cortex-A only, or is it also using already a Cortex-R? It's only the A1. The, so oh, in okay. the system sketch, we had the microcontroller part in there, mm -hmm. but uh, we're not yet there. It, we came from the QEMO one, which was basically just having the Xen, and this would be another step to go for. Yeah, yeah. Okay. thank you. Hi, um, I would be interested, uh, how do you create all these images? Is there some support for it in the Meta Eliza layer in Yocto, or uh, do you build them uh, basically externally from the Yocto? No, um, in fact, uh, they are built with a uh, Yocto layer. I have nothing changed. I have the only used directly uh, the Yocto setup from uh, which I had, and I've created the image as, and this is not, as, there's not much happen. Because uh, to be honest, I'm not uh, the specialist for Yocto, so I have to replicate the stuff I see. Um, and uh, I guess the only thing is I have, uh, it has to be uh, put to SCI uh, and uh, this is the only thing. Um, I have, there's nothing adapted. Uh, it's out of the box. This is with respect to the systems demo and the automotive use case, which is just a plain look that we have. We use the Yocto as it comes from the AGL at our Meta Eli there as an additional layer. This builds everything and it's built within the 
GitLab Cloud Infrastructure, so you can see uh, the build logs there. You can download the image from there. You will find the, the SBOM for it, so this automatic SBOM generation. You'll find the uploaded artifacts from the um, boot process, image comparisons, everything is there for the use, automotive use case, and we want to get to this stage for the system demo with Xen and Zephyr. There's another one. Yeah. No, you already have yours. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. I also wanted to know if there's like already like some bench benchmarking on the usage on uh, of the, for, for example, Zephyr on top of uh, Zen uh, or uh, yeah, against like a uh, just Zephyr by itself uh, on this uh, on this test that you already did. We didn't do, but uh, Stefano did. I think he has some benchmarking on the Zephyr parts. At least he was quite quite happy to see also which real-time performance he could achieve when using Xan and Zephyr on the system. And this was part of his presentation. I don't know if it was really in the presentation, but he took it last year along with this uh, talk in Austin. Mm -hmm. And there, at least from this performance, I cannot say something about CPU loads or if you want to go for this perspective, but he said from real-time capabilities of the RTOS, this was really satisfying for him in the microsecond range, I guess. Yeah, and in terms of safety, this was also like good for the IRQ and cache coherency. So this separation is, uh, is also good already in, in this, uh, with this separation on Zen? Or? Uh, I'm actually not sure. Yeah. I cannot tell you completely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No problem. So we, we try to concentrate on the Linux and that's why we interact with uh, the Fire and Zen community also. We yeah. just get a lot of support from their side. Just yeah. see to try to make it documented and flexible. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, we have room for one more questions or two, I don't know. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, could you go on the slide seven, please? Seventeen, you said. Uh, seven. Seven. Yes. That's good that we have at least one slide with a number. <laughs> yeah, this one with the the. Uh, so next, yes, this one. Yeah. Um, how do you prevent the other operating system running on the micro core? Do not access resources of the Linux system or the other OS. Yeah, so uh, from the microcontroller part, if you take this other OS, there you would need hardware capabilities, so it's not prevented in software. SOC bring certain isolation methodologies with system MMU other parts. So we're doing on this is on this level. This was also an example why we said if we want to really go for a good isolation and so on, that's why we said the Raspberry Pi is not the best option and we would like to go for more hardware, especially discussing about GPU and how GPU virtualization is done. It can mean either you go for a secure way of doing it or you get a fa uh, an easy way of doing it. So this is something more complicated and for the, on top of Xen part, Xen will take care to a certain extent. The yeah. interesting part will be not about how the isolation also works, but also how the share sharing of devices will be established because then your safety argumentation can become different if you share a device, how to really make sure that the pass on a shared device will not get a conflict. Thank you. Welcome. Oh, there, yeah, this one in the back. Hi, my question is related to one of your presentation. You said that uh, you are using S state for the cache uh, thing, but I think in the detailing, I did not see much info about it. So is it that I should check the link or is it something you would like to share about it? So uh, I think it was in the... I think the first... Uh, yeah. Anyway, so what we have, we have an estate. The estate mirror is also uh, accessible. So there's a link on this. There is documentation in the Meta where it says this is how you enable the estate, what to configure as a server. And we had the concern that on the long run, we may have something corrupted. So once in a week, we also build up a new estate to just see that everything builds properly because there could be someone who doesn't want to rely on the estate because maybe of a bad uh, metered connection or whatever, then it's easier to download the things. And so we have this mixture in there and consider, say, okay, to be on the safe side, rebuild this as state on a regular base, but have it available for download. So this is in the documentation. Thanks. 
And it was actually also funny learning from a new joiner. He said, I did everything. And then at the end of the documentation, you mentioned that there is an S state. And he made a PR and just said, can we have this documentation at the beginning? Because I was not reading through everything. I was following the steps. And then at the end, you say, and if you want to save a lot of time, make it, at the make it now. And it was quite a nice thing. That's like how user experience and just thinking in your box, right? So it was really good. Right. We stop here, I guess. Thanks a lot for your questions. Best bye if you have more.